Oh, if you guys do need those gloves, then I don't know where they went. I, I, uh, I put them under the Okay, table. yeah. Feel free to use them. It saves my hands at the end of the day, otherwise they're like just yeah. super chafed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, what was the inspiration? Um, the verse in the Bible, Ephesians 6.13. <laughs> 6.11, it talks about the armor of God, okay. and it's always interpreted as medieval European armor, right. but I was like, what if older cultures are engaged with their armor from their culture yep. that they use for battle, and so I started a series of prints about uh, Japanese armor, uh, African armor, and uh, helmets. Yeah. And it used to be, it was just the helmet of salvation, but for this one, since I was like, I'm going to be carving big, I'm going to just make a big six-foot full-body armor. Nice. And so that's kind of what that's about. Um, uh, the, uh, the suit of armor, was it particular to a certain person, or did you take an image that was kind of more iconic? Um, I just wanted to get an iconic image that would be easily recognizable if I had told people about the verse from the Bible. Yeah. Um, and so, and I loved how my, uh, helmet print, which used to be the biggest print I carved, uh, came out, and so, I just wanted to go with that, um, so yeah. I wish I'd heard all that, I was distracted, but... Uh, it's a verse in Ephesians, it talks about the armor of God, uh, the helmet of salvation, the, I think it's the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of righteousness, the belt of truth. The Bell of Truth, um, I think the shield to ward off the shield of faith. I can't remember the other ones, but um, it's it's always like in Bible school, like Bible studies and like kids vacation Bible school. It's always like medieval, like European interpretations. Um, so it's just like knights and armor and stuff. And so I was like, eh, I want to do like different cultures and so I have Japanese for one and uh, African armor um, so this is the third in a series of prints I've made um, and they always always they're usually like my biggest prints they're usually like 16 by 20 that's been like 30 40 hours carving them and they're always like super huge. Uh, at least it is for me because I usually just do like, I don't know, 5 by 7, 11 by 17. Oh, this is really big. Yeah, this is. I did do a series of prints about uh, the cereal monsters like uh, Count Chocula and uh, Boo Berry and Frankenberry. And, but I made I made those, those are kind of big. Those are like 16 by 20. Yeah, that's pretty big. But those are for Halloween. Um, just kind of having fun. Oh my gosh, that's fun. Right. Yeah, so. Yeah, but mostly because of COVID, I have a little provisional press, and I print small prints, and I do Lego prints, and that kind of stuff. But that's why when this came along, I was like, I'm going to just go for it and apply, and hope I get in, and I can rock a big woodcut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was like... <laughs> this is actually like the biggest I could fit in a car. Oh, that's and it, good. That's it, all, like it. it almost, almost didn't fit. <laughs> yeah, we've had, uh, we've had these folks before that say, like, I measured my car. <laughs> for how big I was going to work. Yeah, because... Uh, it's like, that's going to be a lot of logistical nightmare to... <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that, and then I had a panic attack, so I was like, um, what if it, like, blows away or something <laughs> off the roof? Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> not just the liability, but all the work making Because, oh, there have been so many times, I'm like, something's going to go wrong, I'm going to drop it, and it's going to break or something, but... But it came out good, and I had fun, it was... 
it's very therapeutic, uh, meditative, and uh, I like being able to make something large scale I can focus on. I think people underestimate a lot of the times like how much artists have to just, like think about like all those logistical things. Like you have to have a lot of project planning yeah. abilities to like make some pull something off. I'm glad my wife is more uh, project oriented than I am because. Yeah. I'm the doer, but she's a uh, she's strategy. The about all the the yeah, she's a strategy. I'm the muscle, I guess, because otherwise I'm just I don't know. I get in a mess. I got all these prints everywhere between storage units and random studios and attics that aren't like organized, and eventually I'll get get them organized. But I've been saying that for years. <laughs> so, I'm kind of wondering what I'm going to do with this print after it's printed. <laughs> hang it out, hang it the banner outside. Yeah, right, right. I was thinking about putting it in the living room, just having it to hang. Like. It does, yeah. It does to a certain extent. I mean, um, it depends on how like big of an area you want to do. Yeah. Uh, we've had people say like, you know, if you wanted to shink a something like this yeah, belt exactly. or something, yeah. you could do that pretty easily. Anything bigger than that, it would be pretty hard. Why are you doing like smaller areas? Like, how do you do it? Do you? Well, I know how to like you cut out like whatever material you're doing. You cut out the rice paper. It's, it's actually really easy to do. Uh, you cut out rice paper. And then you use a adhesive. Um, there's one that I recommend by Krylon, and it's, a, it's actually like a repositionable adhesive. Yeah. So you cut it out to whatever shape you want, and then you lay it onto that area. Well, before you lay it on, you have it off to the side, and you spray the, like, the fixable adhesive on the back, and then you just lay it on the spot where you want it. And then when you run it through, it fuses with the paper, and it ends up being a color in the background. Can you, like, your pants you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it would be hard to do when you kind of need, like, that consistent, just, like, one-off pressure exactly. that just adheres it, like, instantly Wait, to the paper. Wait, you to do another color? Like mm -hmm. Do shinkle, yeah, do some shinkle. Oh. Yeah. We've done it at past events where, there's one artist in particular, uh, she likes to do, like, little spot colors. Just small things are like this big. And she'll come with the she'll come with the rice paper like already pre-cut. And then you just spray the adhesive on the back of it and then lay it on the area where you want it. And then when it sends it through, it just sticks to the masa. Oh yeah. So it ends up being a like oh, color that's great. Hmm. It's a cool thing to do. It, it, it works good like in small areas, but like Randy, for example, like he was like, I was messaging him back and forth, and he was like, can I do some shinkle And I was like, well, let me see what you want to do. You want to do these, like, huge strips of them? And I was like, ah, I don't think so. Like, if you, I was like, if you want to do the tongue, like the little tongue coming out, yeah. that would be cool. But, like, anything fun. bigger than that is going to be really hard. Okay. Uh, if you look up shinkle uh, or I can just, add, you know, if you send me an email afterwards, I can send you the information for, like, the rice paper and the, the spray stuff. Yeah. I brought a little chop to do for the oh, yeah. ones that yeah. I'll, so I'll just do that one. Sure. And I just brought yeah, like an ink pad. I, last time I think I did real ink and I, it's That's too scary. I think I'm just going to do the ink pad. Yeah. Yep. What do you mean real ink? Oh, you like rolled out like a I little thing and ink and stamped it? I did last time and I feel like it doesn't, that red especially doesn't dry very fast. Yeah. So the ink pad, it, it just dries immediately and I, I thought that would be better. You know what I saw recently? One of the participants, uh, she was using oh, a, that real stamp, a stamp pad to do, um, to make it dark. So like she, she tinted it blue, hard, and then she was just stamping it with a stamp pad to make it black. And I was like, oh, that's like such an easy way to do it. Oh, yeah. 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 Hmm. Sounds like I'm totally gonna steal. <laughs> Interesting to watch you build up that black area. Oh, here? Yeah, it seemed like it was never gonna go, but it did. It does. It, oh my God. it takes a few times going over it. 
Are you are you cool with the chatter like around the outer edge, or do you want it to be clean? Um, maybe around the outer edge if it could be clean. Yeah, we'll put some tape on there. Yeah. I think this kind of stuff is gonna lend to it. Yeah, I like uh, that. I like that actually, really a lot actually. You looking for more tape? I was, yeah, I was trying to find. Yeah, there's some there, uh, and there should be. There should be. A we had like three rolls. Yeah, it was a pretty white. Yeah, just around the outer edge. asking if like five people taking it. Yeah, I was like, dang, y'all guys. Yeah. Do you think it'll just... I know, it's, it's great. Maybe there. Yes. What do you think about like here? Well, it kind of, it kind of matters oh, it if does. it does pick it up and if it doesn't. Then it's I don't good. think it's going to pick it up very okay. much at all. Yeah, it probably won't. See, a lot of these things, because the yeah. paper is not very thick, there's like nothing to push it down in. Oh, like so a lot of this stuff, it like doesn't even catch. Um, I think it's good. It's good. Is this okay, these little things here? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I know this might be... Oh, right there. Yeah, right in there. The edges are usually the parts where we'll miss, like the yeah. outer edges, because we're trying to avoid getting the open space. Right. So that's usually where we like to look. Yeah. Did we do the... You see up where the tune is right there. Do you want the tune? You got it. Uh, you excited? Yes. Oh my gosh, this has been. It's hard to tell because I've like vigorously sleep deprived, but I'm I very very. I didn't sleep well last night either. I was so like, I, well, I want to eat too much for dinner. <laughs> Margaret, our daughter, was up a little bit, and I oh, you're was permanently up. sleep deprived. I oh yeah, that. but I've been struggling with insomnia since I was 12, so it's, I don't know. I'm just used to it, and so to yeah. It. <laughs> First one's always the easiest because we can see the tint underneath. And then right, yeah, that's can, right. It becomes a little more challenging on the next one. It's yeah. Just fun. Looks good to me. Yeah, looks good. I'll work. Looks good to me. Said the phone was.
вот. I couldn't go on Instagram because it said the phone was heating up. You take it out of the cover. Yeah. So at least I got this. It's very exciting, isn't it? Oh my gosh. It's like, oh my goodness. Uh-oh. The vice is too hot. 